next on court, of course, is the second men's singles. And then it will be the second doubles and last of all, the third men's singles. Well, prior to the start of this tie, one would have assumed that Lee Chong Wei would have taken the men's singles against the veteran dame, Peter Gader, but tragedy struck the world number one. 2 1 up in the first game, over on his ankle, and had to retire. Well, second men's singles. And here comes Jan Jorgensen and Darren Liu of Malaysia. Well, of course, Steen, you know Jan Jorgensen very well indeed. And as the Danish number two, he has the opportunity now to close out this tie if he was to win against Darren Liu but of course these two have never met previously but knowing Jorgensen's character he will be relishing this opportunity definitely it's a dream scenario he probably even couldn't have dreamed about it I think the Danes would have been satisfied with uh, one all and now it's, it's two, two nil and uh, there's a good chance that uh, Jan will uh, close this match the way I see it, uh, yeah, that's right. you want to serve it? been playing really solid uh, here in, in 12. He lost the, the men's final at, at the Europeans, but, um, but suffered a small injury. So, um, what was that small injury? Uh, he sort of uh, pulled a, a muscle in, in his uh, thigh. So, so he was able to, to play on, and uh, and Mark Twibler uh, won the championship. Um, he really deserved the win. He played a great tournament, Mark. Uh, but I, I feel that Jan wasn't exactly at his best uh, at that tournament. So, um, well, and he's been selected for the Danish Olympic team. There was, of course, this uh, contest going on between him and uh, and uh, Hans Christian Witting, who's um, Peter Gade was, of course, one of the two players that Denmark get to send to the Olympics. And, and there's been a little bit of uncertainty. Most people have thought that it would be Jan, but he needed the confirmation. Yes, indeed. Well, as far as Dan Darren Liu is concerned, the 24-year-old world ranking at the moment at 33 in the world, well, 20 places higher is this man, 24-year-old from Orborg in North Jutland. And his win-loss record for the year translates into two semi-finals but it wasn't so much the semi-finals it was the manner in which he reached and those status that really drew to my attention of course in Korea the first of the Super Series events this year Jan Jorgensen beat Chen Jin Chen Jin of course the Chinese number three ranked player number four in the world standing and then a week later in Malaysia Jan Jorgensen disposed of the current Olympic champion, Lin Dan, in three games. So we know he has the capability of the big wins. And for Darren Liu, well, he started this year particularly well as well at the All England Championships. He was in the qualifying event, uh, reached the quarterfinals eventually, losing out to the top Korean Lee Hyun Il. And whilst Jan Jorgensen, many people feel that he is the man to take over the mantle from Peter Gader. In fact, in 2009, Lee Chong Wei, the world number one, said that this man was going to be one of his main rivals in the future. And that's just how highly he's regarded by his fellow players. First ever meeting between these two, as I uh, just mentioned. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Malaysia, represented by Darren Liu. And on my left, Denmark, represented by Jana Jorgensen. Malaysia to serve, love all, play. 
umpire Cormac Breslin of Ireland getting the match underway. He's a busy man this afternoon. Of course, he was very involved in that men's doubles match. He was the service judge. He was kept busy. Good opening rally. One flop. Now, as far as Thanks. I'm concerned, Steen, I think Darren Liu for some time has been threatening to produce some good results. And prior to the All England Championships in March earlier this year, never really delivered. But the signs that suddenly he's made a bit of a breakthrough, got more confidence now. And uh, at times I've seen him play some very, very good badminton. Um, I totally agree. He can play very well and um, sort of got the potential. But then, just as you think that now the breakthrough is, is just in front of him, he loses some unexplainable matches. Yeah. And I, I guess well, part of it is the pressure. I mean, badminton one. in Malaysia is such a huge sport. And Richard and I have just been discussing the negative headlines that so often come out of Malaysia. And they get on the back of their players and they expect them to deliver week in, week out. No athlete can do that. But it, it's a build-up of pressure, isn't it, that it really does take Three, its toll on the one. players. Does and, and I think one of the best examples is uh, actually Wong Chun Han, who uh, lost the final of the World Championships in 2003. And uh, the way I saw it was actually the best playing player in the Olympics, but wasn't able to cope with the pressure and losing to uh, Taufik Hidayat, the eventual winner in, in three games. And uh, I think the the media thought of uh, talked him out of that. I don't know, the dynamics is, I think it's, it's uh, natural that when you have a star player like Lee Chung Wei or Peter Gay, the, the media, the public immediately wants to know well, who will be the next. Yeah. judgment thought seriously about playing it it's going well wide five two there is Peter Gator 35 year old and there's another one drifted wide we ought to mention the drift in this arena not only lengthways but also the sideways drift I think one of the differences uh, between these two crown princes, so to speak, is that that uh, Yan he has from time to time actually beaten Peter Gale and, and can beat him in practice sometimes. I don't suspect Darren Liu can beat Lee Chung Wei in practice at the moment. He simply has a higher level. Yeah. Seven, two. In fact, Yang Jorgensen was beating Peter Gader in international competition going back to 2008. Last 16 of the Indonesia Super Series event and then in the quarterfinal of the Denmark Open a year later, 2009. So he's been putting pressure on for quite a few years now. And, and that gives a lot of motivation because he knows that I'm capable of beating Peter and Peter can beat some of the best players in the world and that means that I have the possibility as well. I don't think Darren has quite that feel yet. He's, just, he's a promising player but I can't beat Lee Chung Wei so I can't be sure that I can beat the very best players, the top 10 players in the world. Service over. Three, eight. But what is it about Jan Jorgensen, his style of play? What makes him such a threat to these top players already? I mean, he's already 
13 in the world ranking. Yeah. His physique is very, very good. He's uh, quite agile and uh, in very good, uh, in very good condition. So he's quite solid to a certain level. Um, what I'd like to see more of is him controlling the game, setting up his own points. Um, Four, eight. Uh, I agree with that. I've been watching him now for a number of years, and, and I've always thought what a good athlete he was, but he's a reactive player. He exactly. reacts to what his opponent is doing, and very rarely commands the rally from the onset. I hope that he's on his way, changing that style a little bit, but of course it takes time if you've been playing in a certain way for a couple of years, then it takes time before you get comfortable with it. Yeah. I think I think there's not so much pressure on Darren because he's been uh, doomed by the Malaysian media to be a sure loser in this match. And now he, Malaysia is down 2-0 and everybody's been expecting him to lose so he can actually play quite freely. Yeah, and he certainly is. Great start by the Malaysian in this second men's singles contest. And of course, it's a strange situation now as far as Malaysia singles is concerned. Not only the tragedy of the fact that Lee Chong Wei will not be taking any more part in this tournament, but Darren Liu on the new world ranking list is actually now lower than Mohammed Hafiz Hashim. But of course, they still have to play in the order at the time that the seedings were originally done for this competition, so he will get promoted to first singles, one assumes. So Chong Wei Feng, of course, is the other singles player here for Malaysia. I can remember one, reading one article in the Malaysian media saying this is terrific when, in fact, uh, Darren Liu moved ahead of Hafiz after his All England performance because they said, oh, that's great, we can have Hafiz Hashim playing at third singles, that's really good for us. Which um, may be some people's opinion, but quite what effect that has on Darren Liu, <laughs> that people are saying, oh, well, you know, we can chuck the second singles and we've got somebody strong at third. Uh, I'm sure that in the, in the long run, it's not really good. It might be nice here being relieved of the pressure so to speak that no one is expecting him to win any matches yeah. but um, but if this continues it's very very hard to uh, to cope with mentally um, and it really takes a lot of backing up from the coaches getting him to believe in himself. Well, that's the sort of rally that will really suit Jan Jorgensen. Long, hard rally, making his opponent move to all four corners of the court. And I noticed the body language. It's Darren Liu who's leading 11-7, but it's Jan Jorgensen who looks like he wants to win this. Yeah. You talk about his physical qualities and his stamina. Of course, we ought to mention the fact that last year, during the Denmark Open, he was diagnosed with a heart virus and had to pull out of the quarterfinal stage, Jan Jorgensen. And given what's happened in world sport recently with... Uh, Fabrice Mwamba, Bolton footballer, of course, and an Italian volleyball player, Italian footballer, two of them very tragically died in the middle of competition. 
from heart complications. Yeah, it's of course a concern for Jan, but he's been thoroughly tested back home in Denmark and the later part of 2011 actually was a, a bit of a, a nightmare for him. He, had, uh, he suffered a big loss in his family and uh, after that he got injured, wasn't able to participate in the Worlds and then he was diagnosed with this uh, heart disease here. So quite an accomplishment yeah. getting back and qualifying for the Olympics. Well, another very famous badminton player. Kai Yun underwent heart surgery back in 2001 and he's won four world titles since then. Now I'm not convinced 14. that playing those flat pushes and the flat fast exchanges is the ideal tactics for Jorgensen. Seems, he actually seems a little bit too eager at the moment. Yeah. And we're trying to play the net shot on in return rather than the drive. Well, at least thinking about what is he's doing, mixing it up. And he just hasn't found his touch and range yet. But it's, it's also a wrong choice playing that trying to play that shot so close to the net because definitely isn't going to win on it and it will give Darren a chance to play a tight net shot afterwards. And they're forced to play three backhands from deep in that back corner. It was bound to break down in the end. That's nice. Well played by Baron. And you can see that Jan is moving a little bit away from the net, and, and that's because the, the, the net, net shot isn't quite good enough, so he can't tell anything about where the next shot is going to come from there, and that opens up the opportunities on the front court. Umpire urging the players to come back on court. Officially, of course, play must be continuous, apart from the designated intervals mid-game, and of course uh, after each game. Now you see that to me is absolutely suiting Darren Lou. Those fast pushes at him, he loves to respond to that, and tactically, I think. Jan Jorgensen a little bit naive on those returns and yeah, that's given it more height. I don't like his forehand return of these short services. It's too difficult to uh, to make a deceptive shot. It's too easy to read for uh, for the opponent so I'd much more like him. To that, that was a good shot. Really quick racket movement there. Makes it hard to read for the opponent but Back to the service returns. A little bit more deception in it, so it's not so easy for Darren to read where he's going to put it. Uh, stood his ground at the net on that occasion, Jorgensen. And he's hovering there, waiting to pounce. 
the sheer threat of being there, I think, forcing his opponent into error. I totally agree. It could be recorded as an unforced error, but it's not. It's a yeah. forced error, it's just psychologically forced. Yeah. He's getting involved in these flat, fast exchanges again. Yeah. Not getting any benefit from it, the Dane. And he, he should be able to notice that he's losing the major part of these flat encounters. So game points here for the Malaysian. Mm, Malaysia got what it deserved. Why on earth did he play that backhand? 14, point. Oh, good defence. A wry smile from Darren Luke. Still another five game point opportunities, though. No, that's nice. Okay. It's gone long, and this time he converts. Twenty-one fifteen. Twenty-one fifteen. Just 16 minutes of play. Yeah, good judgment from Darren Lou. Well, I have to say, the Malaysian did start in exceptional form. Du må godt øh, lave noget på den, men så lave noget blødt, altså ryg, og så lave den bløde. Ikke? Han vil gerne have, at han er klar på, at du trykker. Over ham med længde. Øh, spil de der kiger med ham, og så når du har chancen, så slår du stikket eller kottet. Når du lægger ind i banen til ham, så er du klar på, at der kommer de der flade løft. Han vil rigtig gerne ind og spille tæt til det skal vi kunne gøre, hvis vi er absolut højt. Well, head coach, Carl Zouar, our very own translator here, tell us what he said. Yeah, he was, uh, he pretty much agreed with us that uh, Jan wasn't going to make a lot of money one from one playing a flat game with uh, Darren. Um, he needed to be on top of it if he was going to play the flat game and um, they were having in beginning right in the beginning of the coaching they were having a discussion uh, regarding the wind uh, perhaps it's a little bit different than uh, Jan experienced the first match where he played on one of the outer courts um, I think quite a lot of uh, drift going from where Darren stands now towards Jan so uh, he wasn't really uh, aware of that kind of wind and um, not so good because that indicated that One there was wind the other way. <laughs> and they were discussing the, the service return mm. situation as well. Um, especially uh, it was important not pushing on the service returns but playing it a little bit softer over him. What a superbly constructed rally from Darren Luke. Three love. And yesterday, Joe, we, we discussed a little bit the, the shot quality of Ben Beckman from England. And we could have the same discussion today at a little higher level, but 
the shot quality and the accuracy in, in the shots right now that uh, Jan Jorgensen is uh, producing is simply not good enough. Well played, Jan. Service over. Yeah. And uh, again, as One, we were discussing yesterday, three. the importance of the net shot because it was the tight spinning net shot that forced the shorter left and then the opportunity to play the attacking shot don't expect to win with the first one use it as a building shot to set yourself up for the final kill Hesitation, a little look back towards the line after played the shot, maybe his spatial awareness and as you say the fact that Denmark played on courts number four I think it was when they played against South Africa. Drifted wide, but how on earth did he even get his racket on? That? Over. Three, five. And the slow, we can see that after the first shot, Dan is moving a little bit back. Ah! And he shouldn't be doing that because he's giving Darren opportunities to survive. Just five. asking for the port to be mopped of the perspiration. And of course, Jan Jorgensen, we talked about his victory over Chen Jin earlier this year and indeed Lin Dan, but should be remembered that he's also beaten world number one Lee Chong Wei and Taufik Hidiat. And he's beaten all of the world's current best players at some stage in his career. Six, four. And there's a bit of a story to the Chen Jin victory. There's also a story to the Lin Dan victory, but, but the story with uh, Chen Jin beating Chen Jin in Korea was that uh, a week ah. after he was going to play him again in, uh, in Malaysia Open. And, um, Five, six. and Yan said that uh, he couldn't use that match to anything. He couldn't. He didn't even want to watch video of it because the shuttles they played with in Korea were so slow that it had been a clear contest. And uh, Chen Jin didn't bother to, to take up the, the battle in the, in the clearing contest, so he just Service gave off. it away. And uh, Yen was aware of that. That it didn't really count as a as a normal victory, and he also lost uh, the match. To Jin Jin in, in Malaysia. Yeah, but an hour and 18 minutes of it, it was still three games, wasn't it? It was, and it was the match after he, he'd beaten Lin Dan, so psychologically he was, he was sort of drained, yeah. trailing the whole match against Chen Jin, so three sets were actually quite nice. And he says to, uh, uh, to Lars Uo now, he says, I don't have a headwind. They discussed that he's he's having headwind now, but he doesn't feel it. But it could be because Darren is deliberately playing a little bit too short to avoid playing it long. Nine, five. No, obviously psychologically, he's a little unsettled. Mm, 
Here's another error. Yeah. That's worrying for Ten for the Danes five. because that corner, the backhand corner of Darren Liu is, is one of the spots where he's been a little bit soft. So that, that could be a target point, but it's really hard to target it right now because Jan has made a lot of errors. Or a lot, three or four errors, I think. Well played. Service over. Yeah, still in heated discussion Nine. with his coach. Sometimes does that, yeah, and it's sometimes like he's coaching the coach. Um. Oh, brilliant! Super play from Darren Lou, and he goes in the mid-game interval with a five-point advantage. that there was uh, 20 places difference between these two men on the world ranking. I'm not sure that conversation between Jan Jorgensen and Lars Uart needed any translation at all. I think we got the gist of that. Oh, what a contrast to Darren Lou, who's looking relaxed in that timeout. Almost as if Jan Jorgensen has worked himself up into a frenzy and isn't really thinking clearly about his tactics. He's emotionally charged. He knows that he was obviously favourite to win this encounter and the implications of that for the overall match tie. He's got to clear his head, regain his focus. I think you're right, Jill. I think there's a thousand different thoughts going on in his head right now but none of them very constructive that was a good rally sort of just trying to survive leaving it up to Darren Liu to to win his own points points then I think nervousness must creep into Darren Liu's mind. He's been leading this match, been in control. That's it. Yeah. Nine. I think Yen's gonna win this Four. second game. You just sense a little shift, don't you? I mean, the last uh, couple of points being made uh, with errors from Darren Liu. Going for his winning shot, hitting it wide on both occasions. Opening game, he wasn't missing any of those. And all of a sudden, the gap is close to just two points. That's a magnificent net shot. straight points and there's just one point in it. Oh, oh that's 
call good. Well, Jan Jorgensen doesn't like the call, I have to say. 13, 11. I have sympathy. I, I couldn't really see it from up here. It's questionable, but um, I've been wrong a couple of times yesterday, so. Yeah, me too. I have to go with the linesman on this one. Yeah. Having said that, I mean, players instinctively know, don't they, when their opponents hit a shuttle, they know they have to make such an early judgment as to whether it's going to land in or land out and, and in general terms players are aware and very acutely aware of whether a shuffle did in fact touch the line or not. That's a really good point for Darren to, to get here instead of 12 all it's too clear. Very important rally right now. If Darren wins this, Jan will perhaps start thinking that this line call was really, really bad. No question, that one clearly long of the back line. Control at the front of the court. Well, we're seeing the final smash, but it was the one prior to that at the net, the cross court net shot that really set up the rally. And all of a sudden, he's once again got a five point cushion. I think that's six point cushion. Dean that it's now or never as far as Jan Jorgensen is concerned he really must have a little run of points right here and right now cross-court net shots from both the backhand side and there on the forehand side and both of them of course the day enormous problems just two points away from victory now for Darren Lou. make that one well what a great performance Brilliant. I've just been talking about the cross court net shots, and he wins the match with an absolute peach. Well, a magnificent performance from Darren Liu, but you have to say, perhaps a little bit of a disappointing performance from Jan Jorgensen. shot to finish it off. 21-15, in 34 minutes of play. Well, 
the implication of that is that this overall tie is still alive. It's very much alive. This was the way I saw it, Denmark's best chance of, of finishing this match. Um, so it's, it's interesting how the dynamics of this match cha is changing all the time, thinking that Denmark would fall behind, but instead they take the lead. Malaysia trying to come back.